something Kansas has plenty of. While gentle breezes can be a pleasant relief, the wind can often be frustrating and even harmful. Each year, substantial acres of Kansas farmland are damaged through wind erosion. And this doesn't count the often catastrophic damage of winds related to storms. But wind's power can also be harnessed. Kansans have long used wind power to pump water to supply their needs. Now new technology has taken it a step further. Giant wind turbines are springing up to produce electricity for the 21st century. Though many companies are involved and the wind farms may cost up to half a billion dollars each to construct, free and constant moving air makes them highly cost effective. Turbines produce electricity in breezes as light as 8 miles per hour. Some Kansas locations have an average daily wind speed of 21 miles per hour, and most wind farm sites target areas with average daily speeds of 18 miles per hour or more. The turbines are regulated by computers. The blades can be pitched so that they don't turn at all to avoid damage in storms. Normally, they do this automatically when wind speed hits 65 miles per hour. They can also be pitched to begin operation at particular wind speeds. When turning, blade rotation remains constant regardless of wind speed. In other words, they don't turn faster when the wind blows faster. Wind turbines provide clean and quiet energy. However, potential problems exist. Each tower takes up space and impacts a certain area. The affected area, known as a footprint, is relatively small for each tower. However, multiplied many times, land is lost for production and habitat. The Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks is very interested in wind farm effects on wildlife. While most wildlife populations remain largely unaffected by the turbines, grassland nesters like prairie chickens are sensitive to the high towers. Research has shown that birds, and surprisingly bats, are sometimes killed when they fly into the blades. So location of wind farms is an ongoing concern. Tall wind towers that stretch for miles impose on the landscape and cause aesthetic problems for some people. Some proposed sites affect sensitive wildlife and habitat areas. Generally, most agree that these energy fields are best restricted to croplands in Kansas. Eric Johnson, ecologist for Kansas Wildlife and Parks, is the agency liaison for this important industry. He works with power companies to help design wind farms for the lowest possible impact on the resource. Kansas ranks third in the nation for potential wind energy development. And as a whole, wind energy is a fairly unregulated form of energy. With that in mind, many developers understand that this form of energy will impact wildlife in some fashion. And we're lucky to be working with several wind energy developers here in Kansas, such as Horizon Wind Energy in Cloud County, that understand that fact and are making great strides to offset those impacts. With America's growing need for energy, wind farms are here to stay. Tapping Kansas wind resources, the average Kansas wind farm produces enough electricity to power 25,000 homes. Currently, seven Kansas facilities are operational, with at least 50 more proposed for the state. Kansas Wildlife and Parks will continue to help make sure these new ventures are as environmentally safe as possible. I'm Mike Blair for Kansas Wildlife and Parks.